This webinar will show how to set up the Modbus communications on the Elpro 915U2 radio system. This diagram shows a typical layout. On the left hand side, we have our master radio communicating to a PLC using Modbus protocol. The protocol can be Modbus TCP if connected via Ethernet, or it can be Modbus RTU if connected via RS-485. The radio can function as either the Modbus TCP server or client, as well as with Modbus RTU, the radio can function as the Modbus master or slave. At remote sites, what we can do is we can have this master radio map its data to analog outputs to control something like a variable frequency drive. Similarly, we can have a input from a four to 20 milliamp pressure sensor wired into this radio and have that wirelessly mapped over here and then read using Modbus protocol by this uh, PLC. An interesting point should be the scaling of the four to 20 milliamp values. These are the Elpro factory defaults, 8,192 equals zero milliamps, 49,152 equals 20 milliamps. And at other remote sites, we could also have another Modbus master slave setup. Now to be clear, to transfer data from this PLC over to this PLC is a three-step process. The first step is to set up the Modbus master slave between the remote radio and this remote PLC. The second step is to create wireless mappings going from this remote radio back to the master radio. And lastly, the third step is to create a Modbus master slave setup between the master PLC and this master radio. Today's webinar is going to show you how to set up the Modbus master slave setup between any 915U2 and the PLC it is connected to. This is the Elpro meshing configuration utility software. I am going to reopen the previous project that I created in the previous webinar, which was an introduction to creating 915U2 wireless mappings. We have two radios in this project. And if I click on the arrow, I can expand all of the options for each radio. To set up Modbus communications, I'm going to go ahead and click on Modbus. If I am just setting up this radio to act as the Modbus server, then this is the only box that I need to make sure these two parameters are enabled and we have a device ID. That's the only piece of information that needs to be done. And this radio will now respond to all Modbus TCP client queries uh, that are directed to it. The addressing is done via IP address. Now note with the 915U2, there's two IP addresses, the radio port and the ethernet port. These two ports are not bridged together for security reasons and for other design uh, purposes. The ethernet port is the IP address that we will use to do our Modbus communications. Going back to our Modbus setup, if we wanted to set up a Modbus TCP master, we need to enable this box here, and now we see some additional parameters. This is the scan rate, so this will send a Modbus master message once per second. We need to make Modbus TCP client mappings. To do so, click on add. And the next step is to select your command type. The command type just determines what direction the data will flow. 
In this case, let's assume we want to take analog inputs one and two and send them into this remote, uh, this PLC, which is connected to this radio's ethernet port. What we would do is we would select the analog inputs from the list. I'll select analog input one, select a count of two, and since these are consecutive registers, that means analog inputs one and two will be sent over. As these are 16 bit registers, we will need to specify that these are register outputs. They will then be stored at this register location. And of course, this can be adjusted to any 40,000 series register on the PLC. The device ID needs to be different from the device ID of the 915. Therefore, the PLC must be configured with a device ID of two or higher. Next, we will change the IP address. In this case, I'm going to set the IP address to 192.168.0.5. Yeah. And uh, whoops, let's just go back into that and review the major parameters here. Whoops, we want to set that to dot five. Now it's important that the IP address of the PLC match the IP address that is entered right here. It is also important that the IP addresses of the radio and the PLC be different from one another. They cannot be the same. Lastly, Modbus uses port 502. So make sure port 502 is enabled on both the radio here and on the PLC. Lastly, we are going to create a fail register. And in this case, I'm going to pick digital output number seven. There is an LED on the terminal block next to digital output seven, which shows the status of this register. By observing the LED, you can visually tell whether this mapping was successful. When the radio sends out a mapping to the PLC, and the PLC responds to that mapping, that acknowledgement is used to determine the status of the fail register. If the transmission failed or if no reply was received, then this LED will turn on and digital output seven will become active. When DO7 is off and the LED next to it is also off, then communications were successful between the 915U2 and the PLC. Okay, so that's how we set up a basic setting for Modbus TCP. If we had Modbus RTU, then what we would need to do is we would need to select Modbus uh, RS45 Modbus parameters and uh, set the port for Modbus RTU master mode. Then we have to set the baud rate, data format, and flow control to match what the PLC is. So these parameters must be the same on the radio as they are on the PLC. Next, we have our scan rate and response timeout. These are gonna occur once per second and the radio will wait one full second for the PLC to respond. Next, we need to create Modbus RS-45 mappings. And these will be of very similar orientation to the Modbus TCP mappings we just created. The first step is to determine the flow of data. In this case, we'll select a read uh, input. If we have digital signals that we wish to send, we select digital. If we have analog signals that we wish to send, we select analog. As you can see, when I select register inputs, it allows me to choose from the 30,000 series of analog uh, values. If I select register outputs, I can now transfer values from the holding registers. And similarly with digital inputs, uh, the prefix 
is determined by selecting digital in, digital out, registers in or registers out, and that allows us access to the full range of Modbus registers. The slave ID must be set to match that on the PLC, and it must be different from the device ID of the 915U2. Next, we have the number of data points we wish to transfer. Then we have where we wish to store these values. Now I can send them directly to digital outputs on the radio, or we have a series of generic registers that can be used for any discrete value. We have hundreds of registers on board this radio, as you can see, and they can be then mapped into a uh, PLC or transmitted over the air to a remote radio, et cetera, et cetera. If I had analog outputs, I would select analog. Uh, we also have the option of 32-bit <coughs> analog outputs, as well as floating point analog outputs. I, whoops, let's see, now we need to make sure we have, there we go, we'll send it to registers nine and 10. And then lastly, ARC fail register. In this case, we'll select digital output six. So if this message fails to get an acknowledgement, then digital output six will turn on. So a very easy visual indication of successful Modbus communications. And that's primarily it. Uh, the uh, rest of the options would be for more customized, more particular settings, but this is a very basic setup to get Modbus communications between our 915U2 and the uh, PLC. One last point to be aware of is, again, just to emphasize the uh, IP addressing scheme that these radios use. Each radio has two separate uh, IP addresses, one for the radio port and then one for the Ethernet port. The radio ports of all radios will be networked together, so they must be on the same subnet and they must have different IP addresses. The Ethernet ports are not bridged to the radio port. Therefore, the Ethernet port can be the same on each radio. And this is because these Ethernet ports are not bridged together. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact LPRO Technical Support, and we will have some additional webinars as time allows. Thank you.